So many years ago, I was playing football in the garden with my younger brother. He took a shot at goal and missed. So I had to go into the undergrowth behind the goal to go and find the ball. And what I did find was this odd egg-shaped ball. I didn't know what it was. I asked my dad and he said, that's a rugby ball. A couple of weeks later, he took me down to the sills to have a runabout with some lads at the Mini and Junior Rugby that they had running there. And I absolutely loved it. I loved yeah. teammates and running around and the contact. It was such good fun. So at the end of the session, the coach came up to me and said, did you have fun? I went, yeah. And he said, welcome to the Sills. The Sills, Solihull's premier rugby club. A club with a lot of history and an inspiring story. Well, the Silhillian story begins at Solihull School. It was formed in 1560 and sport started to develop at the end of the 19th century. Rugby became the game of the public schools. Solihull, of course, wasn't a public school. It was still Solihull Grammar School then. But in 1930, they changed over to football. So uh, the boys had started to play rugby before the formation of the rugby club. And it was conceived while they were still at school. Um, and they wanted to keep playing after they'd left school. So the rugby club was formed two years later in 1932-33 season. They had a pitch uh, which called Broomfields, which is it's now called the Bushel Fields because the headmaster, Mr. Bushel, bought some of it for the school in the 1920s. It was re wasn't renamed until 1953, actually, it was Bushel. It was called, always called Broomfields. And they played on a piece of ground there which was used to graze horses. And they got changed in the Royal Oak Public House, which is on the corner of Mill Lane and Drury Lane. Drury Lane still has the name, but they were two old uh, roads leading from the High Street down to Warwick Road, and they used to change there. There was another ch uh, change in place they had on the corner of uh, Drury, the other end of Drury Lane, and apparently they shared a tin bath, but they only had cold water. Most of them changed at home and turned up for matches on that piece of ground which is now sort of a, a part of the Field of Mars and part of the bushel fields of the far side of the school. And it was rented out uh, in the summer to, uh, to graze uh, horses on. But uh, and then, of course, in 1953, they played their last match there and then they moved to, um, to uh, the new premises. And thereafter, and years, a few years, 15 years later, they moved to Copteeth and where they are now. We moved here in 1967. Uh, quite a move that was. Uh, I didn't sustain my, sustain my presence in the first team uh, for too many years. And I got captain of the uh, second team, uh, and that was for three years. And we were very successful. Got a, a lovely blend of former first team players who were sort of you know, the wrong side of 30, but very experienced. And the young bucks still coming from school, because obviously it was still a closed club in those days. There was a sort of unwritten rule uh, that you could uh, play for this club if you hadn't been educated there, as long as you didn't go higher than the Saints, which was the third team. I was captain between 1980 and 1982, and I remember um, doing a survey of the rugby clubs in the area in 1982, and realising that there were 57 teams that went out on a Saturday within a five mile radius of here. So, so rugby was very popular and we were finding that we were not getting the feed that we used to get from school. Um, school uh, has without any shadow of a doubt um, improved its academic standards uh, since the you know, 40s, 50s and 60s. And the net result of that is that far more pupils we go, are going off to university, um, they're spending their time away from home and they're getting jobs wherever they can around the country. In my day, the majority of people probably didn't go to university. I don't know what the percentage is, but say 50% didn't go and they stayed within the area. So we, were, we had um, a good pull to uh, 
pool to pull from. By 1982, which as I say was my last year as captain, uh, we were finding it difficult um, to actually make the numbers up uh, of former pupils. Uh, and the decision was taken in that year that the following year, uh, 1983 would be the first year that we would would be a fully open club and have non-old Sillillians playing in whatever teams they wanted in as many numbers as they wanted. One of my closest pals, remarkably, was a chap called Claude Coton. And dear old Claude, despite the fact that he was 30, 30 years older than me, um, he and I had one thing in common, and that was we were both taught by Swati Ansel for maths at school. And he noticed this fact, and he reminded me of it um, on many occasions. But we became very good friends, despite the, the obvious age difference. Um, I was given the privilege, actually, of um, saying a few words at Solihull School uh, when the Claude Coton pitch was inaugurated and this this was as a result of the legacy that Claude left to the school uh, in fact he left a considerable sum of money to the rugby club as well uh, but he left uh, a lot of money to the school and they were able to uh, provide fencing and an electronic uh, scoreboard at school um, so I was very proud and uh, privileged to be asked to say a few words on that day. I've lived in the area for 33 years now. I applied for and was offered a teaching job here at Solihull, but as it worked out, even before I spent day one as a teacher at Solihull School, I was encouraged to, to pop down to, uh, to the sills. And it's clear to me that not only was the school a very important part of the borough and the community, but the Silhillians as was Old Silhillians Rugby Club, was an equally important part. I look back incredibly fondly on my early days in the area, particularly in the Sills rugby environment, and from that day, friendships were forged, and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that those friendships exist now through the name of rugby, through the name of the school, and forevermore may that be the case.